Steph Dorworth from Beautiful to the Core, and today I want to talk about a bikini competition topic. This topic is things I wish I knew before I competed. So sometimes when it comes to deciding on whether you want to do a bikini competition or not, um, you, you know, you kind of just kind of look at the pictures and the transformations and you see these beautiful women who went from just feeling okay about themselves to having this rockin' body, solid muscles, looking so beautiful and confident on stage and you think, wow, I want to do that. But sometimes you don't realize how much hard work and how much time goes into prepping for a bikini competition. And sometimes you don't realize how much money it takes and really what it takes to have the total package to bring on stage. And so, as someone who's competed before, I want to talk about just a few things that I wish I knew before I competed. That way, you can better make your decision on whether you want to compete or not. One thing I wish I knew before I competed is how much time it takes. Alright guys, so when it comes to getting ready for a show, you're investing time every day into making sure that you're ready. You're investing time into working out at least an hour a day typically, that varies by person. You're investing time into doing meal prep, weighing out your food, tracking your food, making sure you're eating the right amount and not overeating. You're investing time into drinking enough water each day. You're probably practicing your posing throughout the day. Every time you walk into the bathroom, you see a mirror, you know, you're probably in there posing a little bit and hoping no one catches you. <laughs> But um, you're also spending time doing some research online about what you need to do to get ready for your show. You're looking for your suit, your heels, your jewelry. You're looking to book your hair and makeup and your tan. So it does take a lot of time and it's a big investment. Now is it worth it? Yeah, I think most girls do find that it's worth it because in the end they learn a lot of self-discipline and they become a little bit more confident in their skin. And so, yeah, I do think it's worth it, but it does take a lot of time. And so it's not for someone who has trouble with commitment um, or with sticking to something. This is gonna be for someone who is 100% in it, wants to do this, and is gonna give it their all. Another thing I wish I knew about competing is that when it comes to the spray tan, you really need to get your face and your body as even in color as possible. So when I competed, I did my own makeup because I was trying to do everything on my own to save money. And so I went to MAC and I got like the darkest um, makeup I could, foundation and everything, the darkest bronzer, and I put that on and even that wasn't dark enough, you guys. So I think sometimes it would be worth it to hire a makeup artist because they're going to have all that darker makeup ready for you already and they're going to better be able to see the face skin tone versus the body skin tone after the spray tan and match you a little bit better because um, for me personally I think my face was too light on show day so that's something I wish I knew and I wish I just would have paid the 75 bucks and had someone do my makeup. But, you know, I was trying to be independent. So just keep that in mind. You want everything to be as even as possible because the judges are looking for that overall balanced look, overall good balanced tone. Another thing I wish I knew is that when it comes to what the judges are looking for, they are really looking for the total package. I guess I just thought that when you get on stage, they're just going to look for the girl that has the best body, but that's not really the case. They're looking for someone who not only has the best body, but has the best suit on, has the best spray tan tone overall, has the best muscle balance and curves, has the best smile, has the best hair. And so it's really this checklist. They're looking for a lot of different things and whoever can check everything off is going to be someone who is going to place in the top five. And so you would want to make sure your body comes in 100% ready and solid, right? But I guess I didn't really consider how important it is to also work on having that perfect posing routine that has a lot of confidence in it and a little bit of spunk to it too um, to really set you apart from the rest. Because I think you'll notice on show day, when it comes to all the other girls, Everyone else looks really awesome too, so it's like hard to stand apart and kind of set yourself apart as, okay, here's the average bunch and just a few girls are going to be above average and really bring the total package. 
So make sure you're keeping in mind that body not only has to be on point, but you also want to make sure you're practicing that confidence, you're practicing those little extra moves in your posing routine to show off that confidence and show off your best angles and curves. And just keep that in mind. Total package is going to be the girl that wins it. I've got two more points. Another thing I wish I knew before competing is that you are not on stage very long, ladies. You put all this hard work and time into getting ready, and then once you get on stage, you kind of get like your 15 seconds of fame. You get to go out and do your walk, do your front pose, your back pose, your front pose again, and then you are done as far as having the spotlight on you. Then you kind of go line up and they do their comparisons of everyone side by side, where you do a little bit more posing. But for the most part, you really aren't on stage very long, unfortunately. And you know, you get you get your time during prelims and you get your time during finals, but that's it. So it's a lot of hard work for not much stage time. And if you know that ahead of time, then maybe you won't be as disappointed as I was. But keep that in mind. I think that's why it's also great to book like a photo shoot um, the week before your show because then it's a little bit more time to have the spotlight on you and you feel good and you feel confident and you have some other pretty photos to share feeling your best um, in some other outfits, not just on stage with that dark spray tan and in that suit, but maybe kind of get some photos in a gym setting or, you know, cute photos that you want to have to share on your blog or whatever it is. So stage time is very limited, so maybe consider some other things to enjoy when you're feeling at your leanest and at your best. And the last point I want to make, um, things I wish I knew before competing, is that competing and competition prep does not have to be miserable. It doesn't. And the sad thing is I hear a lot of ladies um, and I also experienced it as well that you feel like you have to starve yourself and you feel like you have to overwork yourself and do so much cardio that you're just completely drained and you don't enjoy any moment of your competition prep. Um, I experienced that a little bit too because like I said before I did my prep on my own with no help but I read stuff online and so if I read that a girl professional IFBB pro ate these five meals a day, which consisted of sweet potato, chicken, and asparagus at every meal. Well, I followed that because I thought, okay, if she ate that in one, I'm going to eat that and do well, you know? But that's not the case. You do not have to have a miserable diet to follow. You don't have to feel completely starving and hungry every day of your entire prep. You don't have to be limited in eating just certain foods with certain foods off limits. Um, you don't have to be on the treadmill for an hour plus each day. Those, that way of thinking, we call that like old school. That's like old school mentality about competing is that you have to do that to succeed. That's not the truth. That really isn't. What it comes down to is what are you putting into your body? What macros? Um, you're following the macros, whether it's getting macros from a Pop-Tart or getting macros from an apple. Macros are macros, and it really doesn't matter. So you can eat foods that you enjoy a little bit during your prep, and you're still going to be consuming the same amount of macros. So it's like, why do you have to starve yourself and not enjoy your meals? And what it comes down to is that when it comes to the cardio, strength training is going to be better and you need to focus more on strength training than on cardio during your prep. So that old school mentality that you've got to be doing that cardio one hour, two hour, three hours a day, no one has time for that and it's boring. So don't do it. You don't have to. Um, I wish I knew that because my prep, I, I didn't enjoy it. It wasn't fun because I thought I had to do that kind of old school mentality. And so that's, Partially why now I'm trying to help other ladies to the stage, especially first time competitors, because I'm trying to teach them that prep can be enjoyable. Here's your macros, here's your exercises, and I only need you in the gym under an hour each time for your workouts. And yes, you can eat that cookie if you want it. And guess what? Prep can be enjoyable, 
and you can succeed on stage by following flexible dieting and training that's more focused on strength training than cardio. So if you want some more information about the coaching that I provide, it's online coaching at beautifultothecore.com slash coaching. Um, click on that coaching tab. I've got a few different package options and I think you'll find that they're all custom. They are all based on evidence-based research for your training and nutrition program. And so you can succeed on stage and you can enjoy your prep and really know what you're getting into before competing if you check out the information I have on that page as well as the bikini competition prep guide. So if you haven't already watched the video that I do that covers the competition prep guide, and also be sure to join the Facebook support community. Their Facebook community is called Bikini Competition Prep Community. Um, any women are allowed to join and we just answer each other's questions in that group to help them feel more ready for the stage. Um, so anyways, I hope you enjoyed that video, Things I Wish I Knew Before Competing, and hopefully it helps your decision on whether you should compete or not a little bit easier. As always, thanks for watching, and be sure to follow me on Instagram at Steph Dorworth as I post more health and fitness tips there every day. Thanks so much. See you guys later.